Welcome to this talk, entitled Volcanology in the Twittersphere, Tracking a Year of Volcano Information Dissemination. So Twitter is a microblogging and social media platform where registered users can post and interact with short messages and micromedia, referred to as tweets. So here's an example of how this might look. I'll send a tweet from my own account. First, I write a short message. In most alphabets, the length of the tweet is limited to 280 characters. So note the use of the hashtag or pound sign to tag keywords or phrases. And another feature of Twitter is the capacity to mention other registered users using the ampersat symbol. So that is shown on screen. There are also options for adding additional content to the tweet object, including external URLs and various media such as photos or videos. So now that I have sent this tweet off into the ether, it can be read by anyone who navigates to my profile or appear in the timeline or newsfeed of anyone who follows my account. Anyone who is checking or following the hashtag VVMSG would also see this tweet. So similarly, I can use Twitter's search function and search for keywords or phrases. Uh, here, searching for volcano brings up a lot of topical information, dominated in this case by news media covering the onset of activity at Kilauea in December 2020. Twitter is a multilingual platform, so we can similarly search for other strings in other languages. At any point, we can interact with these posts, either replying to them directly uh, by reposting the tweet to our own timeline, known as retweeting, or by liking the content. And I'm going to focus on retweeting because this is most directly representing dissemination of information from one user or set of users to another audience. So why might we be interested in Twitter? Well, for starters, there are over 300 million monthly active users worldwide, and perhaps largely due to its popularity in academic circles, Twitter is frequently lauded as an effective outreach and science communication tool, uh, especially in the geosciences, and the idea that Twitter data could be leveraged quantitatively has been floated on multiple occasions. There exists limited evidence to support this, however, uh, in large part due to some of the limitations imposed by Twitter's Search Application Programming Interface, or API, which restricts both the number of tweets that can be crawled and the time span over which this can be performed. This study is an analysis of a continuous dataset of tweets containing volcano-relevant search terms in 20 languages collected over more than a year. Uh, this unique dataset was compiled by programmatically searching for predefined strings and downloading the crawled tweet objects while circumventing the various API limitations. So the search strings are all translations of four keywords or phrases, volcano, volcanic, volcanic eruption, and volcanic activity. Um, so these, uh, or tweets containing these strings, are crawled by the Twitter API, downloaded in JSON format, and then stored locally. And this process is it's repeated every 24 hours. So using these data, we can look at the time varying behavior of certain words or phrases and assess how this lines up with real world phenomena. And also the interactive nature of Twitter means that we can study these data in the context of a network. So I'm going to show some examples of both presently. The data set contains over 15 million tweet objects, each of which contains a series of mixed root level attributes and child objects, often including geolocation data. So perhaps unsurprisingly, a lot of volcano-related tweets come from volcanic areas. Some are highlighted on screen. We also see other hotspots in non-volcanic areas associated with scholarly research and, of course, the abundant non-scientific usages of each search term. So here's an example of some time series shown as a characteristic function, uh, which is just to scale the data into a common reference frame. So I've shown five signals here for Volcano and its equivalent in four other languages. So we also have Yanarga, Volcao, Burkanon, and Volcano. So I'm just going to draw your attention to two time periods here. In the first case, we see a peak in this signal reflected for all five strings. This coincides with a cluster of eruptions, of which the eruption of Tal is highlighted here by a vertical line. Of course, this was a human tragedy, which garnered a great deal of international press attention. A detectable multilingual response in internet chatter following this eruption indicates that information is being shared widely 
and globally. However, if we look at another famous eruption, that of Farkari in 2019, we observe some differences. While this eruption generated a spike in many languages, it is notably absent from others. For various reasons, information about the Vakari eruption didn't propagate across as many languages. And we often see these seeming discrepancies, um, usually in the case that natural hazards in non-English speaking countries not being picked up by international news media or influential science interest accounts. Um, so here's another example with six different strings. Um, and in this case, the, the eruption of Mount Asama in Japan is clearly reflected in Russian, Japanese, and Korean Twitter, but largely escapes notice in, um, in the Romance languages. So English and French are shown here as examples. And indeed, English dominates the, the volcano-centric Twitter sphere with the general effect of amplifying volcanic disasters in the global north at the expense of other regions. Although information may be able to cross borders, it's not necessarily transcending language barriers. A uh, final note on the time series analyses is that events that gain the most traction are tragedies involving the loss of human life, or instances where we see temporarily clustered, although geographically discrete, volcanic eruptions. So we can think of the sequence of tweets and retweets as a network, in much the same way as we can map the neural network of C. elegans or study the spread of contagious diseases, network analysis allows us to explore the interconnections between different nodes, in this case Twitter users. Um, so depending on the string we look at, we observe different network phenomena. Some are well connected, others less so. Some are very large with millions of nodes, others with only a couple of hundred or fewer. Generally, they have very distinct structures. Compare here some real data on the left with a randomly generated network of nodes and their connections on the right. So in both cases, the nodes are colored according to their connectivity and sized according to their eigenvector centrality, which is a gauge of node importance within the network. In the real network, uh, we see several hub nodes um, to which subsidiary nodes are connected. In real terms, this represents a handful of highly influential Twitter users that are responsible for controlling much of the flow of volcano-related information throughout the Twitter user network. And these key networks, or key nodes, sorry, explain why not all eruptions result in equal Twitter traffic, even if the characteristics of two eruptions may be similar. Information being propagated or otherwise by well-connected accounts with high perceived prestige characterized by high eigenvector centrality. Another key feature of these real networks, as opposed to a random network, is the potential for the development of information cascades. So I've highlighted such a process here. Information tweeted by one user is retweeted by another, from whom it is retweeted again by another user, and so on. So due to the strongly connected nature of what we could refer to as volcano Twitter, it is possible for users to propagate information to a vast number of other users, even if they themselves have few followers. The more connected a Twitter user is, the further and faster information they disseminate can propagate. So importantly, this comes with mounting responsibility. It becomes ever more critical that information they share, in particular during volcanic crises, is accurate and non-harmful. As we look at larger and larger networks, we see that connectivity tends to increase, but the importance of central or key nodes uh, still remains. And when we look at networks with several tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of nodes, we observe some very complex patterns indeed. Now this is a huge and intricate and growing data set and provides many unique opportunities for comparative multilingual longitudinal and network studies regarding the dissemination of volcano focused information on Twitter. I'm really just showing a, a taste of what we can glean from these kind of data sets. To wrap up with some key takeaways, by comparing long and short term counts of volcano related strings, uh, we see that peaks above background chatter correspond well with discrete volcanic events. English dominates the volcano centric Twitter sphere, even in discourse regarding volcanic eruptions in countries where English is not an official language. And not all eruptions result in equal Twitter traffic, even if the characteristics of two eruptions may be similar. Um, for example, events clustered in time, such as the eruption of 
Kuchinora Bojima, Tal and Fernandina, which all erupted in January 2020, yield much larger peaks. Uh, perhaps this is due to perceived linkages between these eruptions. Uh, the role of key node accounts, uh, well-connected accounts with high perceived prestige, comes into play as well. As a final note, some eruptions, in particular those of Fakari and Tal, both of which have been mentioned earlier, uh, they appear to be responsible for step changes in the amount of background chatter, suggesting that headline-grabbing disastrous eruptions may foster increased public interest in volcanoes more generally. So if you would like any further information, transcripts or preprints, please feel free to contact me via the details on the screen. Thanks for listening.